Within the Nihon Dento Ryo, traditional Japanese dance, I believe that mai and odori belong to a different group. The origin of the word mai comes from the word wheeling or spin, mawaru, but it is also referring to horizontal movement. That is the reason why when we practice or have a rehearsal, we shuffle or walk by dragging our feet along across the stage. I often teach my students to keep their waist low by bending their knees as they walk or move. This kind of style is unique to Mai. When we say odori, the first thing it comes in mind is kabuki dance. Kabuki dance style approach is what we call a narrative dance, where one of their main characteristics is leaping, jump, or spring a long way during the dance. Therefore, in a way, odori includes more bouncing, dynamic movements compared to Mai. In other words, the story interpretation from a Mai perspective is from one of the story's characters, and for that reason, Mai can become poetic. Mai, more than anything else, expresses one of the character's story feelings, although it does not specify precisely from which character it is. Consequently, if we compared Mai to Odori, Odori has a lot more narrative throughout its movements. More importantly, in Mai, it narrates a person's story, in consequence, it is only for one performer or maybe two. Although in Odori they have some individual performances, generally it is a group of dancers representing different characters in the narration or tale. Nowadays, Odori and Mai are assimilating the positive qualities of both styles, therefore, often we can find techniques that are similar. Our Kyomai Inoue Ryu is an all female dance group. I think it is self explanatory, but male dancers are seen more in Odori rather than any other Mai style. Of course, many female dancers are performing odori too, but male odori approach can often be powerful and ambiguous. Although it is true that nowadays the boundaries between mai and odori are becoming blurred, from my perspective, although it may sound very conservative, I still want to honor our kyomai's history and always our mai being performed only by women. In other words, I want to keep kyomai as kyomai. Albeit Kyomai has only been around for 200 years or so, Kyomai today has been influenced a lot by the aesthetic from the era at the time, the people who were around, the Oyemoto Inoweru master at the time, and so on. There have been four masters before me, and I am the fifth master of Inoweru. Unfortunately, we have only records, either in old pictures or films, of Inoue Yachiyo III or the third master. Since Inoue Yachiyo IV was my master, I learned from her and by watching her performances. Regarding the third master, I only learned about her through the remaining pictures and films. One thing I can tell is that there was quite a big difference in the way she and her students performed compared with nowadays Kyomai. Even then, their kimono styles were a little different from today too. Although nowadays we think about electrical light as part of our daily life, back then they used only candles. Same goes to the stage sets and the theater. One can see how much things changed a lot over time because of new technologies. I feel that because these changes are very natural that gradually our audiences expect different things in our dances and performances. As I mentioned previously, there are no many remaining written records of the first Inoue Ryu master. However, we have knowledge of her name. Her original name was Inoue Sato, being her family name Inoue. It is believed that she was Choshu Ronin's daughter. A Choshu Ronin is a masterless samurai from the Choshu group. It was during Inoue Sato's work at the Imperial Palace when she began to learn and to create her original Kyomai style. She married once to a fish wholesaler, but they never had children. She passed to her niece, Aya, the title of Inoue Yachiyo, becoming the second Inoue Ryu master. The origin of the name Yachiyo, according to one of the remaining written records, came from one of the Konoe family noblewomen's famous quote as Inoue Sato was leaving her job at the Imperial Palace. Tamatsubaki no Yachiyo made sonata no koto wo wasuremasen. 
Like a camellia would live a long life, I shall never forget you. The name Yatsio, their kanji character means 8,000 years, and by 8,000 years meaning a long time. Therefore, she took the Yachiyo name from the quote and used it as their name. And since then, the camellia, it has been used for our Inoue crest and also adopted on our fans and kimonos. Yes, the Inoue name. My original name before I was married was called Michiko Katayama, and then I was allowed to write the name Inoue on my nafudagake, which is a Japanese method of displaying the names of the members in a group on a wooden board. A person is only permitted to use the name Inoue when it reaches and can maintain a certain level of my mastery and have self-awareness and pride in their my performance. This goes for me too, as I was given the name Inoue Yachiyo from my grandmother when she allowed me to take over her name. Our crests come from the famous quote by the Konoe family, Tamatsubaki no Yachiyo made sonata no koto wa wasuremasen. Like a Tamatsubaki, a kind of Japanese camellia would live a long life, I shall never forget you. We took our camellia crest design from this quote, which is nowadays called the ibishi. There are similar crests which represent the i shape, but they are a little different. The relation of the Inoue Ri school and Gionkobu has a lot to do with Inoue Yachiyo III, called Haruko initially. Haruko was a student of both Inoue Yachiyo I and II, and also one of the first students allowed to use the name Inoue. During the Meiji Restoration, Japan went through a volatile period. Since the capital was moved from Kyoto to Tokyo, Kyoto people felt that Kyoto was a little left behind. Therefore, they come with the idea to host a World's Fair to give Kyoto international exposure. But unfortunately, the first fair lacked preparation. For that reason, the following year in 1872, they host the exhibition of arts and manufactures, including exhibitions featuring the products and arts of Kyoto. One of the events happened to be the Miyako Odori. Back then, there were no public performances by the Geiko and Maiko. One of the reasons why this happened was because during the Edo period, the government prohibited the all-female kabuki performance, which led to no female public performances in Japan. Therefore, the Miyako Odori is often recognized as the first formerly all-female public performance in Japan. Although, unfortunately, there is no much records of the event, we know that the Miyako Odori served as one of the central events of the exhibition. People of the Gion and government officials took the performance idea from the Kamenoko Odori in Ise no Furuichi. It is believed nowadays that the current Miyako Odori is based upon the Kamenoko Odori. The name Miyako Odori was decided between two. Miyako Odori or Miyabi Odori. Miyako means the capital in English. Haruko, who was in charge of the Miyako Odori at that time, advised that Miyako Odori would be appropriate to remember how Kyoto will always resemble the capital of Japan even after the capital has been moved to Tokyo. Haruko was chosen to be in charge of the choreography of Miyako Odori although there were many other schools' styles of dance in Kyoto. Perhaps the reason why she was chosen was that she was young. She was only in her 30s. Haruko promised that she will never leave Gion and to never go to other hanamachi or geisha towns to teach. In return, she asked if she could be in charge of Miyako Odori all by herself. That is the reason why many people believe that she was a well-thought-of person. Since then, the Kyomai Ryu school has been in charge of the Miyako Odori. Of course, there has been a couple changes since then. 
Now the Miyako Odori starts with the silver sliding screen, but in the old times, the folding screens had drawings on it, and we have modified some of the dances, inserting more storytelling features. The first Miyako Odori took place in a different location from nowadays Miyako Odori. From the second Miyako Odori to the present time, the Odori has always taken place at the Gion Kobu Kaburenjo. As I mentioned before, Japan at that time was going through a period of uncertainty and social political reconstruction. A country which was used to be secluded suddenly opened up to the world and tried to emulate Western lifestyles as foods and architecture. That is probably why the Miyako Odori shows how much Japan was trying to rebuild itself. Despite all the other school styles of Ma in Kyoto, Young Haruko was chosen to be in charge of the Miyako Odori. Ever since, the Inoue Ryu school teaches Mai to Geiko and Maiko only in Gionkobu, and every year is in charge of the Miyako Odori. It is my pleasure to be here in Britain to perform our traditional dance, the Kyomai. Ever since Dani-san has started planning this event from a couple years ago, I am happy that this is finally happening. We will be performing two Mai, and although I am not aware of how many people will be able to see our dance, I believe that Japan and Britain have things in common, like the fact that both countries are an island. I am curious to know if people from a country with such old history will accept our style of art and also the shamisen and koto music that will be played along the mai. We will be performing a mai called Lady Aoi and Yashima, which are about the famous tales of Genji and tales of Heike, respectively. We are very excited to perform these two mai in Britain. We hope that we will be able to show everyone the traditional art of Japan. Thank you.